been an interesting pick. I would certainly call it a bit of a risky pick. Not the most optimal Fafnir. I but think it looks it's, like I might be thinking better of it. No? I think it certainly has an an idea it, uh, or a um, some merits to it. I mean, this is a, rel right. a relatively cold map. so And so, it looks like we're getting a HPPC Shrek out of Bashar. So maybe a bit of list theming there. And it looks like we have action. Both teams are on yep. the move. All right, so this is a splash damage based list. We've got the Shrek with heavy PPC and two regular PPCs, the Fafnir with a pair of heavy PPCs and a pair of regular PPCs and a pair of light PPCs, just for a little spice, and the infamous Black Sunshine Mithras variant. Don't recall the designation, but uh, the nickname speaks for itself. It's got an array of heavy lasers backed up by a pair of high explosive ATM 3s. If that gets in a rear torso, well, it might be only 25 tons, but you can say goodbye. The Syrians have been pulling that variant quite heavily to some success last week. To great success, actually, against the Jade Falcons. That's right. Mithras is never to be underestimated. It might be a 25-ton battle tractor, but it's got the guns to pull its own weight and then some. So it looks like the Syrians are sticking to the narrow areas of the map. They're hoping to find a short-range engagement. Some of these sight lines are over a kilometer long, so that'll be tough for them if they get caught out further than their max range. But it looks As like I... you've got a little bit of NASCAR in here with the Wolverines heading around the opposite side of the map. So typically what will happen in a situation like this, mind you, typically it doesn't always happen. When they reach the other team's spawn and haven't made contact, they'll often turn back in towards the center of the map, figuring that's kind of the fastest way to figure out, to localize the enemy team. Yeah, that that does seem to be a pattern of behavior that we have seen before. I do wonder whether we would you know, see something like that happening here. I think Alshane is, to be honest, on the small side uh, in terms of the... Uh, sorry, I can't think today. In terms of the maps that are potentially available uh, during the bidding process in the tournament. So I think it might be possible uh, that they would be more likely to find each other already, especially given that I think the... I think whatever Demolisher Bob is in currently, uh, if it's the AC-21 or the LB-21, it has Guardian ECM, which would mean that it would be able to stay active, theoretically, as opposed to running radar passive, which would give them a bit more of a uh, knowledge advantage uh, or, you know, electronics advantage in terms of trying to find, find the enemy. Yes, Speaking find of, each other. We are, we are nowhere near contact yet. And what I would like to know from my fellow commentators is why are there enormous bloodstains on the walls of this map? Who died here? What died here? It looks like they slaughtered a beluga whale. <laughs> you know, I was wondering that myself. I never really noticed these, but uh, it's a little disturbing. The earth itself is bleeding. I don't know. Maybe this is how clanners grow meat. <laughs> on their in planets too inhospitable to uh, sustain livestock. I have a theory that when they were testing how cold this map was, the map designer might have licked the map and gotten their tongues stuck. And, and then decided to do this to... multiple times? Yeah, you know, you got to make sure it's, it's cold in all the right places. That's a good point. That's a good point. I, I was going to say, oh, maybe that's just the, the natural pattern of a rock, but, you know... That's an interesting hypothesis. Ba based on the stratigraphy, I don't think so, because there's this pretty clear line of... Uh, there, there's this pretty, pretty clear white line intersecting through about half of it. Maybe, maybe the, oh, oh shit. Both teams are... I think they just blundered into each other. Trading initial volleys? The Syrians are grouped up very well. The Wolverines are in a forward line. That Black Sunshine is going straight in. Not straight in. He's going a little in. I think this type of trading favors the Syrian team. They've got a lot of burst damage with those PPCs. If the Wolverines want to win, they're going to have to press in 
and get that Jupiter Tonins into the fight. Blood Raven just took a full volley from the from the Daishi. He's got to be hurting. So this is a pattern we see a lot. Both teams are hesitating around a piece of cover, trying to win the pokes before they commit to a full push. Down Blood goes Raven. the Mithras. Down. That's it's an easy pickoff, but it's not a solid target. The Demolisher Prime is chain firing to lay down a constant barrage of screen shake, suppressing the enemy's ability to get consistent damage. The Wolverines are in, the Syrians are rattled. You can tell by all the twisting that Fafnir is oh! going down. Fafnir down. Looks like this game is in the bag for the Wolverines. I would say this game was one in the list building for them in a straight up fight like this. The Syrians never stood a chance. Burst damage against the massive, massive DPS of that Daishi with the screen shake holding them down, preventing them from being able to focus a target effectively on yeah, one component. Definitely, and you'll notice the, uh, the Taishi got cockpitted, it looks like. The only loss on the Wolverines team. It's fully intact, just <laughs> the, the meat inside is dead. That's right. Daishis are very susceptible to cockpitting. That's why the splash damage list was a solid uh, strat for them. I just think they really didn't have any answer to the other two choices that the team brought. I mean, the AC-20 demo, that lays more armor than all the others, so I think that could have been fine as long as they make sure the other two tanks go in first. I don't think they're oh, thinking about the half so much camo. as they Yes. I spoke too soon. <laughs> brand representation. It's all about that brand. All right. Looks like we are live here. So how are we calling this one based on the list building? Personally, I think I'm going to favor the Wolverines just because bringing tanks means that they're min-maxing for survivability. And I see a bit more synergy in terms of their favorite engagement ranges. I think the Wolverines are fools if they do not stick to the north of this map. And I don't think they're fools, so I think they're going north. Yeah, I think... Syrians are spreading out. The Anubis is going out ahead to scout here. Domkak is a very practiced Anubis pilot. That's one of his favorite uh, starter mechs. And uh, he's been... Honestly, probably the first high skill player who really adopted the Anubis when it came out. So I think this is a comfort pick for him. You know, it's like when the chips are down and your honor is on the line. I always say, you know, go for what you can really play. Go for your comfort picks. Play That's your damn best it. damn mech warrior that you can. The Wolverine team has staked out the mid high end of the map. And I think that Anubis, yeah, the Syrians see them. They're opening oh. fire with the UAC twos from the north. Puma trading with Chevalier. I don't favor that for the Puma. User joined your channel. But this range seems a little more ideal for the Syrians, if I'm being honest. I think the Wolverines are not finding their ideal engagement right now, User although the Anubis is channel. split. Do the Wolverines know that Domkek is there and that Anubis? Well, they well, know, they know now. now. If they push W, that Anubis is dead meat. They are pushing W. They are not pushing W. They're hesitating on the ridge line before they crest. All right, they're going in on the Anubis. Going to be their primary. Disorganized charge from the Wolverines, but let's see if they can pull the game through. There's some friendly fire there. Bob looks like he hit Serial. The Puma's back. hanging back and getting free damage on the Ares. Got a close range 3v2 scuffle. Blood Raven employing a bit of physical combat, getting good hits on the Ares rear. That Ares has to be hurting. I think I'm they seeing... need to be taking out that Mithras. Oh, the Black seeing... Sunshine gets a kill! I'm seeing back torso damage on the Anubis. It's got to be hurting. And down goes the... This one goes for the Syrians. The Black Wait. Sunshine play. Oh my goodness. They focused the Mithras first the last game, but they failed to do that this game. And it shows. So my yeah, they... skepticism of that Puma was totally, totally unfounded. It just sat on that ridge as a gun platform. I think got top damage on their team. Yeah, by a 20-point margin. Oh, yeah. Totally took no damage. Well... I have to hand it to Bashar. He's the master of making unconventional lists and tactics pay th pay off. So he managed to stand. Thing? Yep, he managed to stand back and get free damage on the enemy that entire time. The Anubis, one touch from death. The Puma, virtually untouched. The Mithras, missing half on one side but virtually untouched. My goodness, we call that a bungled target priority, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone in between. So I will say something we didn't call is that that Anubis was running active sensors that whole time. No reason not to with stealth armor. So it probably steered the other guys in and, and oh, almost probably certainly. told them exactly what to do. Oh, wrong button. Yeah, I'd say Bashar is theoretically the one calling the shots, but Domkek is by far the one with the most experience on that team. Yes? Or no, no. 
I don't think so. Bashar has been playing. I would put them about even. Mm. Yeah. That's the thing about a team like this is these players are all roughly on a level playing field in terms of experience. Blood Raven has less experience in the format and in terms of making drop calls, but uh, he's a solid player who will pull his weight nonetheless. And when you have more than one player who's capable of directing the team and making calls, uh, that just means you have fewer points of failure and they can be more co-reliant. That's a good point. I stand corrected. I'm currently driving my uh, camera around the map looking for turtles, and I gotta say, I don't think there are any turtles on this map. We did discover I... that there are fish on TSA Clearcut yesterday. I have to assume the Davians uh, killed all the turtles and made them into soup at some point. That sounds like a Davian thing to do. This is their home world, after all. Yeah. What was the Wolverine standings coming into this week? Uh, I believe they're in they're in fifth place. Yes, at uh, three to two, tailing just behind the Jade Falcons at four to two, the Connoisseurs at four to one, SJ at five and zero, oh, Syrians at six and zero. Oh. I'm not sure how that happened. <laughs> Leave that's the Black Laner Echo Airsoft that has. A quartet of machine guns, a HAG-20, and ER ATMs. So with the Syrians playing extreme range, this match is just going to come down to sightline management. Yeah, and normally I would say the, the Gauss, <clears throat> Gauss demo would be a very strong pick, but given that the Syrians are coming in with a Senate, it, I anywhere that the Gauss demo can shoot is somewhere that the Senate or the the ultra auto cannon showed and can shoot from farther. So if the Wolverines show themselves in the open for too long. The Syrians auto win with yeah. the DPS on those auto cannons. So they are headed roughly towards each other. We have both teams on the move. Correction: the Wolverines are posting up on a hilltop. Mm, I don't know about this. I think they would have a better chance here if they had pulled something other than this or uh, scarecrow pull here, the Ryokin Bravo. I don't know about this pick. I think yeah, they're we... going to wish they had a Ryokin Foxtrot or, uh, I don't know, like something else, something with a hag or well, they're some counting, capability of hitting back. Counting on that thumper to carry them. We're again seeing Domkek in the lanner out on a wide flank, just looking around. I think he's seen the Wolverines. Yep, he's open fire. I don't actually see where the Syrian position is. Yeah, I... Oh, I see them now. I think the Scarecrow pick might have cost the, the Wolverines this match. Oh! The first thump around. Thump around into the black hit. liner. Uh, I, I couldn't tell if that was a direct hit or not. Uh, followed up with a miss. Against a Black Lantern, though, I don't think he's going to get many hits. That thing can accelerate up to, I want to say, 150 kilometers per hour. The other Syrian and... elements have engaged. UAC 2 fire is converging right on Bob's Thumper Rommel. Excellent. Wow, Ultra AC 2s. Wow, well, it... Ultra AC 2s. My goodness. Backing down this mountain as fast as he can. He can't shoot while he's on the move. The Thumper Rumble cannot fire unless deployed, and he is just covered in impact effects. He is dead. Oh my goodness, the Thumper Rumble is down already! Yeah, that's... It looks I... like the, the Syrians have this set. The Wolverines are going to be hard-pressed to do anything now. I think the Wolverines lost this one in this building. Very true. A sad thing. You hate to I... see it. Yep, I, I hate to say it, I hate to see it, but the Wolverines should really either have brought more long-range firepower... Or found a closer position where the Rio could get into play. Honestly, uh, uh, Rio Bravo supported by another brawler with a thumper shooting into the battle from far away might not be the worst thing ever. It would be a sort of heavier version of the Puma Foxtrot play we saw from the Syrians in the last drop. But uh, that's not what we had here. Their list just lacked synergy. Oof, the Ryokin Zero throttled by a tree. 
Bly comes in to seek a warrior's death. He's been ranging that uh, airsoft in as much as it has him in range. His arms are gone. Oh, a cruel way to go. And that's An impressive big, showing from the Syrians, to be sure. Most definitely. Again, their strategy of using a scout to direct UAC 2 fire executed flawlessly. Like we've been saying, it's all about making the right play for the list that you have. And the Wolverines, hate to say, but I don't think they managed that. Bringing a Ultra AC-20 Rio and parking it on top of a mountain. Not sure what the thinking was there, but that was not going to work out for them. This is an interesting reversal of the situation we saw with the Jade Falcons versus, I want to say, the Sea Foxes. Last week, where the Jade Falcons posted up on this hill, where today we saw the Wolverines die, but they had the long-range autocannons. Rack 2s in that case, I think. And they were able to sandblast the attackers as they came in towards them. Well, that's the, uh, that's the set. Should we swap servers? Yippers. Uh, I'm just checking really quick. I have to report which sets they were using, because no one else did that. Uh, what was the set for the Alshane drop? I'm not sure. I am very stupid. <laughs> um, I don't even know the Seabill set, so... It's on the challenge page. It produced an assault mech, a mid-sized tank, and a, a Mithras or Chevalier on both teams, if that helped. Well, they already played one of the Mithras sets, so I think... Was it the All Starters? No, it was one of the Assault ones. There. Well, I'll be sure to note that down next time. Well, that was an exciting set. Um, I would have liked to see a better showing from the Wolverines on drop three, but the first two, wow, those were exciting. Let me tab out here, look at the server list, see what else is going on. Um, looks like we've got Connoisseurs versus Dragoons. On what arena? Arena 3. Alrighty. And Sea Foxes versus 12VR plus Duelist in Arena 5. Oh, well, you're the man with the stream. I think both of those could be theoretically interesting to watch. I think heading the, over the... to Arena Three. Yeah, it is. All right, I'm gonna take a really short break. I'll be back in a moment. What's the um procedure? We gotta back out to the main menu before putting in the password. Yes. Uh... Definitely some gunfire going back and forth here. Yeah. Just LBX2s chipping away at these Dragoons. The Dragoons, are they going to hold their position or are they going to respond by advancing? Yeah. Looks like they're going to push up. I think they realize that they're a bit outranged here. Bringing the Mauler into play. That looks like a Mauler Prime. It's got Ultra AC2s, ER large lasers, and I want to say LRM15s on the ears. So... We've got a Mauler duel developing here, both primes. Invic has taken a knee out of respect for Black Lives Matter, also to lock his missiles on faster. LRM's launching from the Dragoons. Not sure where Invic's LRM's are. He's not in range yet. Looks like I see some LRM's hitting the hill there. I would say the Dragoons are not trading positively. They're weathering a storm of Ultra AC-2s, and their missiles are striking terrain. I think from what I've seen in this tournament, a lesson that Dragoons have not learned yet is that LRMs are very unreliable in single life situations. It's great if you can get the damage down, but at extreme range, your enemy just has too much time to get behind a mountain. 
That's right. LRMs are not best used as a main source of damage most of the time, so much as they are a zoning tool. You use them to punish the enemy for maneuvering within your sight, within your range. LRM fire incoming in Invic. Lambs active on that catapult. Those were Ooh. unlocked LRMs. Really? Yeah. They did not track. Well, it looked like Invictus just ate a volley there from my side, but I wasn't oh, I able to decent. see up close. I saw those fly right by him. Landed oh, looks like Invictus. Uh, looks like I think that's Pride with the Gauss shots on Invic. This is a really interesting fight. They're just all trading fire at long range. Um, I suspect the connoisseurs are coming out ahead. Uh, the scores are barely ticking up on the Dragoon team, so I have to say it's likely they're getting out traded here. I've been seeing them eat hit after hit from enemy Gauss rifles and Ultra ACs, and I'm seeing a lot of LRMs hitting that hill in the, in the distance. I was going to say, they're launching a lot of LRMs, but not landing any. They're making good use of this ridge, too. But I think they need to decide to push or break contact. Fish or cut bait, as the old men say. If I'm in this situation and I see the enemy is split, that's going to cue me to try to engage one part of their force in line of sight the other. And because the enemy has that big, slow mauler... That would be easy for them to do, but they're not making a play here. They're cover peeking around the hill and standing to deliver. Liko, your human emulator is breaking down a little. We got a slight bit of robo voice. Oof. These LRMs are just not doing the work the Dragoons want them to. They're so satisfying. They make so many hit sounds, but... Oh, down goes Done. the Warhammer. Finally, a pickoff for the Connoisseur team. Both teams standing off at range, unwilling to close in. Can really draw a match out, but it I'm looks gonna, like I'm the... I'm going to challenge that one. It looks like the Connoisseurs are going in. Finally. User Once you get a pickoff, that's when you say, let's move in and finish them off. And that's exactly what they're doing. Pride doing a great job of oh. taking cover. Blowtorch is going down. He's gone. That Mahler just took too much damage and probably got side torsoed. Pride again getting good volleys off, but it's three against one. He has no prayer. That's it for the Dragoons. All in the bag for the Connoisseur team. Let's get a paper doll check and see what that trading was like for them. Although I have to say, I don't expect much damage. Argus is missing about 20%. Mahler practically fresh. Catapult, also practically fresh, missing about 30% on one side each. I have so, to say, I think the Connoisseur team really had that one in the bag from beginning to end. Why would yeah. you say they had it in the bag? What, what would you point to as, as what gave them the win? Because from a naive point of view, it, it looked like they were both playing the same tactics. Yeah, well, when you have a... You know, it's easy to know what the optimal play is when you have an asymmetrical matchup i have long range you have short range that means i want to shoot you a lot as you're running in and prevent you from popping up at me below my max range but uh if you're both using a similar list you know you have long range guns i have long range guns we're staring at each other from about a kilometer away it's hard to tell what to do you know you basically just want to stay cool and try to find a way to out trade the other team and i think the connoisseurs they uh stayed steady in a firing line they weren't really peaking so much as standing up on good sight lines in the Dragoons. By contrast, um, they were doing a lot of peaking. They weren't necessarily all popping up at the same time. And they just weren't getting the damage in. Uh, they started receiving a lot of fire. And I just think they didn't make a coherent counterplay. And they didn't really shoot back in the same, vol in the same volume of fire that they were receiving. Invix UIC 2s were going almost from the moment they made contact. I wonder how much ammo he went through. Yep, that's right. And we didn't really see the same from the opposing team. We saw a lot of uh, non-committal dancing around the hill there. And really, uh, failure to lay down the same kind of Ultra AC2 barrage that they were receiving. Yeah, and I, I also will say I feel like the, the only place where the the two lists differed was in the, I believe that would be the middle slot, the 
uh, either the, the, catap the catapult alpha versus the Warhammer Golf or Foxtrot. And Moving I think that that was Arena definitely five a... now. I think Arena. that was. Moving over to Sea Foxes versus Wolverines, real quick here. Go on. All right. So, yeah, that, that was another area where it uh, was definitely favoring the Connoisseurs because. He did that later. Right. They're still on Dune, so I assume they are still banning. Liko, it's suspicious that you have joined the team with your clanmates. Are you perhaps transmitting your life force to them? I must admit, I'm sending my mech energies their way with my psychic mech powers. Using the spares menu, I assume. Using, uh... Well, using my, my mental spares. Here, I'll spawn in and send them some spares in-game, too. It's a great idea. I got paid recently, unexpectedly, because my books sold more than, than expected. And a friend of mine, uh, she needed some help with rent, so I sent her some money. And then I was like, oh, damn, this I is just like spares. Living Legends. You know? She was like, need spares, send spares. And I was like, here, buy some spare ammo. Except she didn't buy ammo, she bought food. But if you think about it, buying food is kind of like buying spare tons for your mech. And that it lets you perform for longer without dying. That's very true. Apt analogy there. That's how Living Legends teaches life skills. That's right. And of course, you know the reason that uh, we had to restrict Seabill sharing in recent patches, right? Is that communism is overpowered and is the inevitable final strategy of organized play. It we is. You know, sending spares, is, sending spares is a really good demonstration of the effectiveness of mutual aid. Yeah. And if you think about it, the military is basically a communist organization, right? You join, they pay for your food, they pay for your guns, they pay for your training, they pay for everything. You get state-sponsored health care. Am I wrong? Am I wrong? I don't know about that. I'm not a uh, philosopher specializing in political science or anything like that. Huh. But uh, I think we are about to see a game on clear cut. Once more under the cut, my friends. Where'd Baker go? Is he dead? Uh, I'm here. I'm here. I uh, didn't have anything to comment on, so... What about communism? Uh, uh, most... I'm... Uh, uh... I saw that band <laughs> set seven, but I don't see any other chat regarding the striking phase for Seabills, so we'll just have to see what they pick. Now, would you two describe yourselves as rooting for the Jade Falcons in this matchup? I think it's only fair. I mean, we are Falcons after all. I, I don't think that's a secret, but uh, I mean, I think more than anything, uh, I personally would like to see a good a good match. Like, if, if the Falcons win by doing something blatant cheap out, you know, wouldn't be wouldn't exactly fit the honor of the clan. I think. Yeah, I mean, I am going to be rooting for my team, but I'll try not to allow my biases to affect my casting over much. Like Baker, I just want to see a really good match here. Um, I love to see skilled players go up once against one another and, uh, you know, just show everybody what the top level of play can look like. Now, what is Jade, anyway? I think it's some kind of rock. Well, I think it's some kind of rock, too. But it's not like amber, is it, where it's a solidified resin? I don't think no. so. All right. So Jade is a mineral uh, much used in some cultures as jewelry and for ornaments, mostly known for its green varieties, though it appears naturally in other colors as well, notably yellow and white. Uh, it can refer to either two of two different silicate minerals, nephrite and jadeite. Wow. Uh, an in interesting thing is uh, jadeite... Uh, well, nephrite actually is one of the proper is one of the preferred or yeah is one of the preferred um, materials for stone tools, uh, you know, ground stone tools among the native inhabitants of the Pacific Northwest coast. And uh, you know, there are there are these uh, you know some some these very beautiful just nephrite wedges, uh, you know, used for woodworking, and they they look like the, they they could uh, they were just 
Well, very much like the last match that we spectated, it looks like the Connoisseurs and the Jade Falcons are taking strong positions on opposite sides of the map and not moving. Fellas, I can feel my IQ draining away, moment by moment, point by point. Both teams have just, this is my hill. There are many like it, but this one is mine. I'm just going to stand here. Do you think they see each other? Or are they outside of uh, extended optics range? I think they are most likely out of out of range, yes. Got some lovely Z fighting on the commando's texture here on the torso. Um yeah, like the I Falcons are on the move again. I do believe that they're not within render distance of each other, even if they do have a line of sight. The limit there is about two kilometers, and it looks like about two point five or maybe even three. <laughs> Z fighting. You know why the German military intervened in the graphics wars, right? Oh, here we go. Stop all the fighting. <laughs> all the fighting. Yeah. Uh, I'll be here all night, folks. <laughs> okay, that was tamer than I thought it was going to be. Uh, Germans, <laughs> Germans, the Jade Falcons are moving out. They're uh, pushing up a little bit. Taking the low ground. Oh, this could be a, this could be a risky play for the Falcons if they get caught out. I think they're wary of this hill here. Something we mentioned before is you're always mindful of where the enemy could possibly pop up on you on the shortest possible sight line and how bad that would be and what you would do in that scenario. And I'm sure a lot of that is going through their minds right now as they maneuver around this hill through the body of water. Even if they blunder into the other team at this range, I do think they have enough firepower to be able to deal with it. As they move in tight formation, they're Invic. approaching the enemy position. Both teams have moved down on hey, their hills. This map has turtles, too. Oh. Oh, my God. The connoisseurs are parked on the runway. This disgusts me. I've lost track. Oh, there they are. They, they went off the hill on the far side. Connoisseur is now retaking their hill, looking out over that long sight line. They are looking straight at the Jade Falcons, but can they see them? They do not have a line of sight. The Jade Falcons are behind a rock from this angle. I'm on the Connoisseurs right now. The Jade Falcons, for their part, seem to be <laughs> looking right back at them. I don't like this position for the Connoisseurs. I gotta say, they've got all these uh, trees and rocks in the way that will prevent them from getting in close range if they need to. All right, they're moving in closer. I think Invic is probably getting annoyed. The Falcons have actually moved off instead of moving directly in. I can't tell if the two teams have actually discovered each other's whereabouts yet. I think they have to have, just from the way they're moving. Solitaire Prime. Wow. Getting engaged. I wonder if you two would consider marrying me. Uh, I'm already married, thanks. Um, I uh, don't... I'm not uh, interested in that sort of thing. You're not a coomer? Not exactly, no. I'm flattered, though, truly. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Are, you seeing, doing... are you seeing the lists that we've got here, Batuta? I am. These are some big mechs with a little mech. Well, so the connoisseurs are bringing a very spicy list here. We've got the Flying Red Avatar backed up by a Solitaire Prime and Adult Daishi. Wow. I so they're she is a heck of a pick for this map. They're going to put a paperweight on their W keys at the start of the game here. Yeah, and it looks like Eve has swapped out the Locust for what I believe is the Light Gauss Osiris, yep. which is a a favorite of some of the uh, you know community standouts. I think that's... Interesting pick here. Yeah, they are definitely going for range. Uh, I believe the Daishi Echo has. At the very least, Guardian ECM. So Ori should be able to stay yes. active. That is both. I don't think any of the choices of the connoisseurs have any electronics. I could be wrong on that. I don't take the Dolt particularly often. The Dolt does have Guardian ECM. So they'll have okay. 1,000 meter range sensors at the very least. What the heck? Is that a giant assault rifle in the sky? What? 
<laughs> I th- I think that's and supposed there's to be... explosions oh, on it's it. It's the Sulaco. It's the Sulaco from Aliens. Oh, okay, okay. You're right. It is the Sulaco. I guess All right. cosplaying is a warship of some kind. Well, that's. I wouldn't be surprised if that was. I wouldn't be surprised if they deliberately designed it to look like that, or yes, you know, the, an assault rifle, definitely. All right, so was modeled after the pulse rifle. Ah, we've got Eve overwatching the middle of the map here in that light Gauss Osiris, trying to determine the enemy's composition and strategy, while the other two Falcons are somewhere else. I haven't been tracking the teams. Let's go to the player cam real quick. Moving into the water in the middle of the map here, while the connoisseurs are doing much the same on the opposite side. Yeah, I think it goes without saying. If they, if they meet in the middle, I favor the connoisseurs. But if the Falcons are able to actually maintain discipline and keep their, you know, keep, keep themselves at the range band they tailored their list for, I think they have a, an advantage. This map has uh, random meteors coming down. Like Death Valley. Never knew that. Those tend Just... to cause some crashes to desktop. Yes, they also spook me when they land nearby. The connoisseurs are doing a good job of hiding behind cover here. I think they want to stay hidden until they move into their ideal engagement zone, which is going to be right in the middle or in the hills to either side. Have you ever heard of the hot tub meta, Liko? I have. That's the meta for Twitch streamers, isn't it? That's right. In Twitch streams, it's most advantageous to try to get all your assets into the middle of the map where there's water to cool you down. And it, of course, becomes hot, a.k.a. a hot tub, because of you discharging your weapons so ferociously. I, I thought it was I thought it was due to the uh, the situation on TC Scorched with the, pool, the pools of molten, molten lead, which is quite a hot tub, which, while it is quite hot, also has very high heat dissipation. I think if you try to stream Pools of Molten Lead on Amazon, I mean on Twitch, is Twitch owned by Amazon? Yes. Yeah, everything's owned by Amazon. Anyway, I think you get banned for violation of their terms of service. I'm not really sure how you would be. I mean, you can stream volcanic eruptions and whatnot. It's just... People pick your engagements well or choose to just be in the very middle of the map. Let's see. Invic team has another, another Mithras, Deezer Mithras. I'm not sure how I feel about this one. I think it could it could work. Um, looks like Domkek is in a Chevy of some sort. I don't know the exact variant on that one. Can't tell from this. I don't know. If, I think all of them have the same missile pod, so I can't tell. But in any case, it's a good pick. Yeah. Lots of armor. If it's the LBX one, LBX one would probably be what I would pick in the situation, just because it's a lot of damage, a lot of burst. Especially against vehicles, which it seems like this is going to be a very, very vehicle-heavy buy tier, given the survivability. Yep. The I other... would not be surprised if we don't see a single mech in play. Yeah. So I think it would be wise. There is a lot of verticality here, and having some ability to, like, either do jump jets, or just to, like, move around quickly between cover, Z-fight, Personally, I would I would go for that, but yeah, and it looks like that might be what's happened. And it looks like yeah, Bashar oh, is in a yeah the Narc Ultra Auto Cannon and ER Medium and ER Large Raven, which I forget. Does that one have the electronics? It does. Very good electronics. It's one of my favorites actually. Um, BHP. No mask, but yeah, BHP C three. I think it has some right. too that I'm missing. I think the, the kind of obvious play here is I believe Alshane is small enough that Bloodhound should be able to cover a Most decent of proportion of the map. Almost all of it, I think, actually. So yeah, I, have... the play there is get the quick you know, get the quick uh lock on with the Bloodhound and uh have the other two have the other two tanks zoom in on whoever is closest. Actually, so this is I'm thinking about it, and ordinarily, especially like on maps with weird sightlines, I will usually always go for something with like GCM, right? Yeah, because uh, that way you know you you have some idea of where people are if they get close. 
that will work against Invict's team if they have anything with GCN, because if anything is active, the Bloodhound will still detect it, like, pretty damn far away. So, but there is also a possibility that they just won't take any electronics. If they it looks like Invic is taking a, blood, a Black Sunshine Invictus. as well. Yeah. And Ufos or Hufos, I, I gotta ask him how that's pronounced. Uh, Three Mithrises! Taking... Three Mithrises! Yeah. Hell yeah. That... That's a good pick. Yeah. Uh, I don't know which Mithras uh, that one is. Is that Charlie? A... Charlie, Charlie. Uh, two MPLs, one Serum 4, one SRM 2, Lambs GCM, and uh, half a ton of armor, I want to say. There, there they go. That could be pretty damn good. Yeah, it, it has a little bit less burst than everything else, but... I think... A lot of you guess it doesn't get focused. I think whatever, whatever happens, this is going to be an interesting match to watch. Okay, so... Taking the high ground. I think they must already see them. Yeah, already sighted. The question is, can they do anything with it? Where are the tanks? Where are the tanks? They're lower ground. They want to do with some kind of engagement. Morbo is a little caught out. Or is actually the Raven hasn't just like tried to get some free damage. Oh, this is walking the way. But, yep, there it goes. In range, no way. Split. They have to. Get, they have to go together. They're in armor deficit. For the. Right, it looks like they Mithras. made contact. Yeah, the Deezer Mithras could actually end up really bad down one game, so I don't know. Yeah, I mean, New Avalon is... Very dynamic. It's not a particular... Yeah, it's, it, it is a difficult-to-predict map, because there's lots of ways it can it can be played. It, it seems to end up most of the time in the... Of this area? Yeah. Uh, yeah, around mid. Hang on, I... My game decided that I'm not allowed to be spectating anymore, so I'm just uh, trying to uh, get it together. What I've seen a lot here is like like the conventional pick is usually to have like two daishis or to have one assault tank and then one daishi. Yeah, I mean we we've seen we've seen uh, Widowmaker daishi and Sheila out of Smoke Jaguar at this buy bracket very very commonly. Yep, which is a very which is a really good pick here actually because in the event that you like this map you can do twelve hundred meter plus kind of actually if you're around like this area especially like these kind of elevated hills. But there are also a lot of opportunities to break line of sight. The Widowmaker is really, really dominant at 900 meters. It has a lot of screen shake, has a lot of armor, has the lambs against missiles. Uh, so if you like are able to close a little bit, it's fantastic. But also, yeah, da Daishi E is like usually my pick on this map because you have in the in the event that you know the other team does go in for like all in 1200 meters, you have something to respond to in the initial trades, and you yeah. still have a lot for close range and GCM and dual lambs present it doesn't look like either teams have made a selection yet no so we haven't actually seen i think anyone go out into the water here which is usually a good thing uh um, i there was i think the match between clan sea fox and wolf's dragoons had on this uh map had them out in the water huh. it was a, actually a quite close map got uh, got down to uh just one one mech on the sea fox side Let's see yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a little, it's like a very kind of spooky area because it has extremely long sight lines if you choose to fight there. But you have to either like if you get pushed there, or, or it's like difficult to push through the water. It's on the other side, but at the same time you can't really like hide all that well over there. You're pretty damn exposed. And if you go into the middle, uh, there's you don't have a great sight line on people who are approaching you, like in the little base in the center. So usually people tend to stick to the 
stuff around. Looks here. like we are seeing a couple of purchases out of the connoisseurs. That is a blood oh, asp. I know what this is. Small pulse blood asp. Uh, this is a rush down list. This is a very strong rush down list. Oh yeah, that's the uh, HMG Kodiak and LB twenty mask blood asp. Yeah, that. I think I think they are they are expecting some sort of artillery fuckery out of the Syrians. Yes. So, which I mean, knowing Bashar, that's a pretty decent guess. Yes, they've done on this map before, so that is a safe bet. Though even, yeah. even though the price and restrictions aren't great here. I think Invic is not in the is uh, playing up the sort of the grumpy old man thing. He's not in the mood to uh, let that happen. Funnily enough, though, I do think that. On this map, because of the hills, uh, Rushdown might potentially be very bad against artillery here if they take a Sniper Mars. Uh, Looks like we are... Uh, it's not a Sniper Mars, but it is a Mars out of the out of Team Tonberry. Syria. Oh boy. Tonberry, Tonberry, Tonberry. So, at least I think so? No, it's not. Wait, the, what the hell is this? Wait, no, it's not Tonberry. Okay, I'm full of it. So this has... What what variant is this? Is this the Arrow Mars? No, I think it might be. That's a Doom Train. But no, wait, no. Okay, God damn it! I'm so bad at identifying Mars. I have to look this up. I see MGs, one medium laser, a couple of things that look like Gauss rifles or Hag. My, my immediate knee jerk reaction is to say Doom Train, but I have to check. Are going to lose honor armor rather? But if the SJs are able to get like a close engage, it'll be way closer. Rock fives will probably end up doing a lot more work. Okay, so SJ's going through the middle, through the river, which is ideal for them. They want closer engages, and it's a lot harder to hit them from long range. Safe well, pick. The Falcons are heading in from the north. Really, the question is, where are they going? Are they going to go around the edges, or are they just going to try and sit here? This is a little awkward. If they have someone watching the middle area, I am okay with it. But right now, they don't have line of sight on mid, so they can't leverage their rack twos. Don't like this. Yeah, I wonder if Proxima hasn't spotted them or at least gotten close to it because uh, he was he was he was jump spotting. I think. Yeah, they've been looking, but I don't think he's able to. Let's see if I can try and like mimic how far he's gotten. But yeah, I don't think he'd be able to spot them from this from this range. Maybe just. They probably yeah. He's probably seen yeah. The reason they're going this way is they've probably been looking towards their main. Saw they haven't circled around that way. A few matches I've seen SJ play on this map, they've kind of uh, leveraged their superior like synergy and ability to focus fire around this little base here. Uh, other teams like they just aren't quite as practiced in like shifting targets, shifting their focus, like kind of also moving, rotating in and out. So they just kind of would like catch them in this base, and then SJ would just win. Just on repeated trades, even if their list wasn't like super optimized for CQC. But yeah, here yeah. this is this is pretty much exactly the range they want to fight. So if CJF spots them here and kind of realizes, all right, we don't want to go right in, this could be good, but I don't think they've seen them yet. Rack Parsons looking that way, but I think the yeah, it's too short. <laughs> hey, they should probably see him now. All right. Yep, they see it. Yep. Okay, so this this is where it starts. Okay, if they're smart, they'll just form up a firing line here and choose one target and melt it. Never focus Proxima. Or focus Proxima. Okay. Good call on the Uller. No okay, they're going to be focusing. Looks on like the the rack whackers opening up. That's got to be. Difficult. Okay, they're focusing down. That, the that has to be their primary target now. Yep. What happened? Yeah, Salmon is hurting. I think he's going to go down. He's shortly. splitting off. And it's good. Ah, oh, but they. Yeah, the CJF is. They are line of sighted. They aren't killing Kidson. They have to choose now. Oh no. Absolutely. Okay, if they, if they line of sight, if they line of sight, Lico or oh no. Okay. That looks like, yeah, that's that then. The yeah, Rixer is getting totally free damage, and it's an uncontested. They didn't collapse. Yeah. Looks like that. Uh, that's that. That's the ball game for the Falcons then. Two zero. Uh, Smoke Jaguar. Two Jade Falcon zero. All right. So. Yeah, I think that uh, again, you know, something that uh, you know, Liko and I and other people have been uh, covering time and again is Proxima is pretty much the, a, just a god of positioning. So at the, at this point, he's 
he put the put the SJs exactly where they needed to go to win, and they did. Yeah, it was partially a, I think it was partially a focus thing too. Uh, yeah. What happened was they all they all opened up on Rook because they realized the Ulr was a soft target. He broke contact and then immediately came back in and was never shot at again because Kitson was in the middle of their team. Yeah, that's difficult. Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah, Puma. This that's is going pick. to be interesting. I'm yes. backing the SJs. They have a lot more armor. Like a lot. They have a lot more, more range. They have a lot more a lot. range. They have more armor, more range, and more DPS. Yeah, right. But you know, I, yeah, we'll see. Playing against the Syrians is always a risky endeavor. Yeah, it really depends on the sight lines. If SJ is able to get favorable sight lines against their against the Syrians' relatively short range list, I think it'll be a done deal. But if the Syrians can leverage what little cover there is on clear cut to sneak up on them. Yeah, I think if the useful. fight starts within 300 meters, then the Syrians will have it pretty good. Yeah, it looks like they're going around opposite sides of the mountain at the moment. Yeah. Well, the SJs Syrians. are moving. Oh, looks like I missed the start here. Ooh, yeah, so far it's Proxy. Uh, uh, Ooh, SJ I like this. In... Bushwhacker Foxtrot. We've got a Ares That'll Golf, always a strong pick. And the Puma Echo. Interesting. Very interesting. We were talking about how the, ooh, um... ooh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this engagement. Lego, look to the left of that mountain. They're about to like run right into each other. The so, like, Syrians right are oh, the Jaguars ooh. come in from behind. Ooh. This could go this could really go either way because they have a very close range list. Wait a minute, did the, oh, the Syrians not know where they are? Oh, they do not. No, they, they do now. Oh. It looks like the Bushwhacker turned to face them. This is a messy situation for the Syrians. Yeah, opening volleys on oh, the... They're going with the AGATMs into kids, and that can't have felt good. Cool. That was pretty bad. Yeah, the Syrians are in a very The battle of burst damage market. versus DPS. Proxima's in deep. Yeah, I'm not sure he's going to survive the onslaught. Yeah, that's a lot of AGATMs. He has to be hurting. Yeah, Uziel really goes down. Oh my goodness. Holy Crit. shit. That's going to be bright. Crit on the side of the mountain. Yeah, Syrian's got a very, very good engagement oh, right Rook Zero goes, goes down goes next. Zero. Oh, there goes oh my the god. Earrings. Holy what shit. What an upset. It like they Sam got... said, betting against the Syrians is always is a bad move. <laughs> Syrians got that favorable 300 meter engagement range. The SJ weren't able to leverage their much longer range to do anything. I think the Jaguars got a little cocky there. They blundered right into an engagement against a more specialized force that could slap them around at short range. That was a lot of yeah, ATMs wow. there. <laughs> they kind of got a... Uh, Those high explosive what? ATMs really pack a punch. <laughs> Blood Raven saying that none of his maneuvering was intentional. Yeah, apparently, um, Blood Raven's twisting was very good that game. I'm curious. Oh, he's dead. Okay. Go down, though. Yeah, I think if the SJs had backed off there, because they had the surprise advantage, if they had backed off on a little more main, might have been able to take that fight better. I think they jumped the gun. They think a win, and they'll it's they're, it's gambling. They'll win challenge. They'll win back channel points. If oh, we, their side we wins. sure do love gambling mechanics. Exactly, the channel it's points are surprise free. Surprise channel points, not gambling. Okay, you right, earn it's channel points mechanics. by watching the stream. So I need to hop on and start watching the stream so Liko can have more concurrent viewers. <laughs> Yes, I would absolutely love the chance to just start stupid. I was watching a streamer, and he had a prediction going of, will I set out what I accomplished to do? And when he started the stream, his microphone wasn't working, and everyone was like, you didn't set out to stream correctly. And he was like, yeah, okay. And he gave it to the doubters. It was great. I won like 11,000 stream points. It was, it was fucking so amazing. Hoggers. Oh, I just noticed that the Baffinier has like a bare cockpit. The Smoke yeah. Jaguars are thinking very hard about all these picks here. They're thinking very hard. 
We've got Kedzen in the uh, Rotary AC2 Osiris. We've seen them run this a couple times, I think. And what else do we have here? Nothing else. We don't know what Rook Zero is taking. What Siebel set is this? The 85, 160, yeah. 40? The Cradle. No, 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 no. Because they have, um, because the Syrians have two 80 slots. Oh, I don't you're think so. Right. I think no, the Char is buying something else now. Uh, looks like a. Black Sunshine. Right? Yeah, that that has been getting a lot of use in this tournament. Does the Black oh, Sunshine so not... have a big array cannon like that? Are you yeah, telling me that's, that's the HML. Gonna have oh, yeah. Four AC 20s? It's disappointing. I mean, they also have HE ATMs. No, they don't. Yes, they do. Or that's do a they? Black Sunshine. Oh, yeah. I guess that's more screen shake. They've got an incredible amount of screen shake and splash damage here. And that's uh, a wonderful counter to a DPS based list, which, uh, if they shoot at this Osiris, okay. But the Mars, I mean, the Mars doesn't really give a crap about splash damage. Oh, am I crashing? Yes, splash damage. No, there is one no. thing which I didn't quite get around to mentioning, but something that caused 12th Yard to lose when they had a Sniper Mars versus a very fat assault list was just literally walking into it. They were in a position where, like, it was kind of like a choke point. So the other team just literally walked at it and physical combat at it. So the sniper cannon was like within minimum range. I couldn't do any damage. So it got it got one really good hit, uh, and then otherwise it was just kind of not doing any damage. Mm. Is all you need for but... sniper cannon. Is that an LPL Loki? It's rock. So I'd expect the Ultra Ten one, honestly. Does the Ultra Ten one have the LB Ten one? Yes, yeah, that's the LB Thirty One. Yeah, the LB X on the shoulder. I don't see I... any. Any green lasers though? Doesn't uh, yeah, they're, they're in the arms. They're in the arms. They're in, yeah, yeah. They're not, they're not green. I don't know. It's a uh, they're in one arm, I think. Oh yeah, oh, yeah they are. The LB ten is in one arm, and peels in some other place. And I'm getting, I'm oh, getting dizzy, spinning around him. Stop yeah. moving! I need to look at your arm. He's licking. So yeah, Proxima is rethinking his Mars. Per